If you're watching this video, you're probably thinking of moving to Knoxville. And if you're thinking of moving to Knoxville, you're probably thinking of moving from another state, probably California. Well, this video is perfect for you because I'm gonna share with you how to buy a house when you're moving from out of state. We're gonna get started. Hello everybody, it's me, Ben Barreto, and this is All Things Knoxville, where I talk about real estate in East Tennessee, moving, buying, investing, uh, all that stuff. If you like this video, if you'd like to see more of it, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, I would really appreciate it. So a cross country move can be super adventurous, while at the same time, it can be really stressful. If you have to find a home, a moving company, possibly new schools, all of that, you have all that to look forward to. So don't let this, but don't let the stress get to you. It seems daunting, but it's increasingly a common scenario. Also, as a relocation specialist of East Tennessee, I'm going to give you some tips to make this process easier. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is find an agent with experience in relocations. You should be working with an agent that is comfortable dealing with buyers that are not in front of them. Not all agents are on this level and it is different. So make sure they're comfortable with that. Ask for past experiences from agents in these scenarios, pros and cons that they've come across. Also, if you're moving for a job, find out if your work has, has a go-to relocation company that can help you out. If they're regularly moving employees to a specific area, then they probably do. Back to the agent, find out if they have strategies for helping you. Find out the details of their plan and see if it's something you're comfortable with. And more importantly, more than anything, they should have a plan. So you want to know that. Two is use a local lender for pre-approval. You should find a lender in the area you're moving to, or you could use a national lender, but they can become kind of a pain because they just kind of treat people like numbers. There's usually 10 people involved in the process. You never get the same person more than twice. It can become a headache. So contact the agent in the area that you're working with and have them recommend some lenders for you. Three is to research the area's cost. Explore the cost of living, differences between your current city and where you plan to buy a house, especially if you hope to live or vacation in the new home. Large cities often have different costs of living depending on which area of the city you live in. So check options in various locations. This is especially important if you're moving to a new state. If you make the same amount of money with a new job, but moving to an area with a higher cost of living, it's just like taking a pay cut. Four, ask about property restrictions. Research property restrictions on your top choices before you travel to look at them. If you're buying a rental property, for example, contact the homeowners association to see if renting is an option in those neighborhoods. When the ability to install a new pool is important, check local and neighborhood rules to ensure it's possible for you to do that. Taking the time to do these things is going to save you a lot of trouble in the long run. Visit the area you want to move to. Travel to the state. Look at the top house choices that meet your needs. Your real estate agent can show you several in, the, in a day after helping you narrow them down. She can also find new choices on short notice if you aren't happy with what you see. The goal is to find the right house without making multiple trips, but don't rush into a decision. It's better to come back a second time than accept a house that, that you don't like. Six is to map it out. In this digital age, it's easy to use the internet to research new homes and communities. Leverage locator sites like Google Maps to study a potential out-of-state home's proximity to good schools, medical centers, law enforcement agencies, parks, restaurants, retail outlets. In doing so, you already, you're already getting a good sense of an out-of-state community before you start looking for a specific house. Seven is to link up on social media. Social media platforms like Facebook groups or Nextdoor can hook you up with local community groups online and these are becoming better and easier to use and they're more personal they give you a sense of the community and you can go straight to the people that live there to find out more about it these groups are higher highly user friendly they're definitely friendly to newcomers and many group members are happy to answer questions about life in their area now is a good time to point you to another video i made since you're thinking of buying you should check out this video 
I did on how to get pre-approved for a home mortgage loan. Just click right here or follow the link in the description. But wait till this video is over. Eight is to handle the closing online. While being on site is a good idea, especially when it comes to home inspections, closing can also be handled digitally. In fact, this whole process can be. You may need to pay a notary public to come to your current home to sign and, and credential key documents, but the actual home closing can be done remotely. Still, certain legal documents may require physical signatures, so there could be some additional costs tied to mailing signed documents from the title company. Nine is to find a long distance moving company. Once you signed off on your new out of state home, you purchased it, you've gone through the process. Once you signed off on your new out of state home, don't wait to find a trusted long distance moving company after closing. Check online for information and reviews and stick with long distance movers with a solid reputation and for reliability performance and high ethical standards. Research some companies online. Once you're convinced the mover's reputable, contact them to discuss rates and timelines. And again, I hinted a second ago, but you can do this whole process online in this day and age. I help people all the time that never step foot in the house that they're buying until after closing day. There are tons of ways to do it. Just hit me up. I'd love to share with you those uh, different ways. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a lot out of it. We'll see you next week. Have a great day.